Hey there, folks. Santee and Dirty Dan. Howdy. Arizona Ghost Riders. What are we talking about this week? Santee, can you do one on physical fitness in the Old West? Line Quest Fitness. Fitness in the Old West. Fitness in the Old West. Yep, yep, yep. Drop and give him 20. What? Uh, you can do one on fitness. It's just spread it out here, drop and give me 20. I, me? I mean, I haven't done a push up in like five years. Okay, so. drop and give me 10. Oh, okay. It was perfect. Oh, one. Uh, why is it heavier? Oh, shut up. You only got a few more to go. A while ago, I spoke about the 19th century diet plan, but didn't really touch on a fitness lifestyle. Mainly because we're talking about a society of people working to make the frontier a livable and economically feasible place to exist. Farmers, cowboys, miners, loggers, soldiers, in-town laborers, they were all physical jobs. Face it, those folks were getting a fair amount of cardio and strength conditioning compared to the banker in town sitting behind his desk. Also, many of them ate to live instead of the popular 21st century fashion of living to eat. Someday, I will be a beautiful butterfly and then everything will be better. By the time of the Old West, a trend was starting in America called the Physical Culture Movement. It was centered on exercise and was promoted through schools and military academies. Edmund McGee was a physical culture instructor at Berkeley in the late 1800s, and I found dozens of articles in Western American newspapers encouraging it, so we know the movement got out West. Its popularity brought about competing exercise systems that eventually led to what we do at gyms today. Let's get physical, physical. This is just stupid. Good morning, this is Greg Newton with Lion Quest Fitness. Now, Greg from YouTube's Lion Quest Fitness is a friend and subscriber whose channel's focus is self-defense and exercise. He also asked me about Aloise P. Swoboda. Yep, had to look that one up. Not entirely sure I'm even pronouncing it right. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. No, no you're not. Aloise P. Swoboda was an Austrian immigrant who settled in Omaha, Nebraska in 1881. He started a mail-order exercise business that celebrated the idea that physiological fitness and drinking four pints of water a day was the key to a healthy life. For the price of about $20, one could get Swoboda's exercise plans that required no machines, just tension in the body. Well, he was ostracized as a quack. However, he influenced a lot of people, and the Church of Scientology adopted many of his teachings. I found there was a push for women's health during this period. One article mentions freeing them of their constricting clothing so they can get a better range of movement. In the military, the U.S. Sanitary Commission of 1861 recommended that whenever practicable, amusements, sports, and gymnastic exercises should be favored amongst the men. Soldiers in the Western Territories enjoyed baseball and other sports as a form of entertainment and fitness. So, it's nice to know that our old Westians were not only aware of the benefits of physical fitness, but even practiced it. Hey folks, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Dad! Come on, give me five more. Do it, do it, do it! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Please don't pull anything out of your pocket. Anything more. I'm afraid. Do it, Calder, an animal! <laughs>